Alright, what is up my friends and welcome to the Strixhaven School of Mages Complete Set Review. Constructed, limited, you name it, we've got it. Every single card, except for the Mystical Archives, which you can find on my CoolStuffInc.com article. Remember folks, tomorrow also, boom, Mog Monday Showdown. Who wants to hear the Mog Monday theme again? I'll be playing against Holy Diver. Mog Monday, Goblins versus Is It Spells. Ringley vs. King Kiln Fiend. Modern Stork Brawl, noon tomorrow. Mog Monday, check it out. All right? I love y'all. Y'all great. Dark Brewers, thanks to Risa. I appreciate that. We got multicolor stuff. Up next is Wither Bloom. We're actually doing each of the individual colleges in their own separate section. I just didn't make the, uh, the title for it because it's multicolor, which is fine. Um, let's go. Let's go. Wither Bloom is next. Starting with the uh, the Elder Dragon, the, the namesake. Beldros Witherbloom. Seven mana mythic Elder Dragon. 4-4 four, four for seven with flying. So stats, not amazing. Beginning of your upkeep, make a pest token. So you want one with, uh, when it dies, gain a life. So each upkeep, similar to Verdant Force, so it's your your turn, their turn, everyone else's turn, so commander card. And then uh, pay 10 life to untap all lands you control only once a turn. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. So we can play this and then immediately pay 10, untap all of our lands. That is rather powerful. However, seven mana for a four, four is a lot. Uh, it is a lot of mana. And uh, while the effect of making a token every turn is really cool, um, untapping all your lands is pretty cool. The question is, what are you doing with this card? Why am I spending seven mana to untap my lands? So I have seven mana again at the cost of 10 life. What's the benefit here? You know, so kind of a cool card. I mean, seems really cool in Commander for sure. Obviously, each upkeep is very important. It's my upkeep and your upkeep and Nicole's upkeep and Igor's upkeep and Karn's upkeep and John's upkeep. But this card feels mostly Commander-y. Um, you, you look at it and you kind of get Grizzlebrand vibes where you're like, wow, pay a bunch of life. It's been broken. But the reality is like, what are we paying 10 life to untap our lands for when we just like could have paid the mana up front anyway, you know? So maybe some sort of like combo deck with like Weather of a Storm. I, I don't even know. But for the most part, this was like a commander card. Uh, and limited of his cards busted. Um, making it two tokens every turn cycle is insane. Uh, but yeah, pretty good limited card. Uh, not really constructed probably. It's just fine. All you commander players out there go nuts, you know? Up next is Blex. Vesting, Vexing Pest, one of our, our modal double face cards. Three mana for a 3-2. This is a lord for pests, bats, insects, snakes, and spiders. So all of your other pests, bats, insects, snakes, and spiders will get plus one plus one. Now it's important to note that the pest tokens that are made by Witherbloom are fairly numerous in this set. So being a lord for those actually does matter, which is kind of cool. And uh, whenever it dies, you gain four life. So face value, this card's like pretty fine. Like a 3-2 that gains 4 when it dies is actually like pretty reasonable, all things considered. Good blocker, it's aggro decks, totally fine. It's a lord for your pests. So front side, very reasonable, very reasonable. Uh, on the back, we get search for blacks. Black, black, and 2. Looks at 5 cards of your library. You can keep any of them you want for 3 life each. Rest go to the graveyard. Um... Pretty powerful effect here. So against a control deck, you can just like slam this and pay, you know, 12 life library of, uh, or Sylvan library style. Um, cards going to the graveyard is also pretty good. So we have like a Sylvan library sorcery in the back and we have like a super kitchen things in the front. These are both very reasonable, honestly. Like both these cards are very, very reasonable. And, you know, against the aggro deck, you play this thing and block with it and gain four life. Against the control deck, you play this thing and draw a bunch of cards. Totally fine. Four mana draw five or, or something like that's pretty good. You can just bin the lands. Obviously, we can bin things like Skyclave Shade or other graveyard cards, uh, escape cards with this, which is kind of cool. And then, you know, pests being a thing. The the Lord part feels like the least important part of this, but everything else is good. This is actually a really good package. Um, there's a lot happening here. Uh, it has a lot of good things. There's a lot of good things on, on both sides of the ball, where against aggro, against control. It's just pretty flexible overall, which is sweet. Um... This card's great. I like this card a lot. Uh, Instructed. And then limited, this card's phenomenal. Just super good draft card. Probably want to use the backside more often than the front, but either way, like they're both just very good effects. 
Uh, it's a mythic. Yeah, I mean, I can see this card not being mythic, but it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Very fun design. Very cool card. A plus on Blex. Constructed limited flavor. I want to search for Blex too. I want to search for Blex too. I guess the flavor of searcher Blex not actually finding Blex all the time is a little, little rough, but it's also a card you can, play, you can play four of. It's a legend that's also good, like, even if you draw multiples, so super, super sweet. Like it a lot. Like it a lot. Up next is Blood Researcher. Black green one for a 2-2 with Menace. Whenever you gain life, put a counter on this. So, of course, all these pest tokens flying around and dying, we gain life less, left, less than right. Uh, there's the two-mana wall that gains life. Probably going to be a pretty solid... Uh, it is search for blacks, not finding blacks. You're right. When you're right, you're right. When you're right, you're right. Um, very solid draft common here for, for limited. Definitely the kind of card that's like, it needs to be... It, your deck needs to be good for this card, and then this card is good. You know, by itself, it's not particularly great, but with a lot of pest tokens and life gain stuff, it's definitely a very reasonable common. Not a card you're, you're slamming, but this is the kind of card where like, you get it later in the draft because you, it's the card for your archetype and no one else wants it. So you pick it up later, pretty solid. It's a fine card. Up next is Cram Session. Two mana, sorcery, gain four life, and learn. Again, if you missed it earlier, I did all the lessons first because you really need to have lessons to contextualize what learn does. So the very first thing I did was lessons. If you missed it, it'll be up on YouTube later. Um, I went over every lesson separately because they're not really full magic cards. They're kind of like half magic cards. Uh, gaining four life and learning is, is okay. It's not great. Um, obviously if we have life gain triggers, things like that, it's pretty good. Um, but learn, the lesson cards aren't really worth a full card and gaining four life is not really worth a full card either. It's not even worth like half a card kind of. So it, it's all right. You know, if you're, um, if your opponent's playing a very, very aggressive deck, if you have multiple life gain synergies, uh, this card is certainly a reasonable addition to your draft deck. But I think you need to be getting a lot out of this. Magecraft, gaining life, so on and so forth. It's 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 playable, but it's not very exciting. And then in Constructed, I mean, probably not. If it's like a pure burn deck in the format, maybe. But up next is Culling Ritual, a really cool card. The Anti-Luris card. Green, black, two, sorcery. Destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Add a black or a green for each permanent killed this way. So this is a pretty cool card. Um, we can play this and say they have, you know, two Swiss Spears and a Tarmogoyf in play. We get three mana back. And on our side of the ball, we can sack some pests or whatever and get more mana. So this can actually generate mana, um, which is kind of cool. The problem is, it's pretty narrow. You know, like we're killing our own stuff. Again, playing a spell to make mana when we could just like use the mana initially anyway isn't really super amazing. So I can go into our stuff just to like make mana. It's kind of eh. Um, and then our opponents aren't always going to have cheap creatures. So it feels more like a sideboard card, especially historic for Luris decks. Uh, maybe modern, honestly. You know, uh, Historic Auras, Death Shadow, Boggles, Prowess, all these cards. You really got to use the the mana, I think, to make it good also. But it does kill Ovens. It does kill uh, Trail of Crumbs, which is pretty cool. It can kill equip random equipments and stuff like that. So it's it's a cool card. It's a cool card. Uh, it does not kill the lands that become creatures. So that's, that's true also, which is kind of cool. Just like I have a cool sideboard card for Constructed, honestly. Um, it does kill Moxen, too. It is true. So Vintage, vintage Cube. Watch out for Culling Ritual. Uh, I mean, this card could make a lot of mana cube, honestly, but yeah, kind of a cool card. Um, it gets better the older you go back in formats where, where mana costs are much lower, but it's cool. It's kind of a cool card. Limited, probably not. Probably not, just too narrow. Up next is Demigoth Titan. Oh my god, Becky. That's a freaking chunky meatball. That's a man who's eaten a lot of beef, all right? Uh, 1110. Again, we have the one of each multi uh, or four hybrid mana cards. Theros is still legal. The motion is still legal, you know. An 11-10 creature for four mana. But there's a catch. It's always a catch, right? You got a sack creature. Everyone attack or block with it. Why not 10-10, you know? Why not 10-10? Um, I think this card's pretty reasonable, actually. It's freaking huge. Now, you would need some sort of, like, continuous token generation, like, you know, Bitter Blossom... 
some sort of like way to keep making creatures over and over again to make this card really good. Unfortunately, the uh, the bad bitter blossom for armies rotated obviously, but this is a chonkster, you know, super super chonkster. Um, whether we're playing black or playing green or playing both, just interesting. Just interesting, you know. You can fling it. Thud's legal. It's just a lot of numbers on a card, you know? And the downside is 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 passable. And again, like, Great Merchant's still legal. This card, and then a Great Merchant against Mono Red. They can't, Mono Red can't kill this card, are you kidding me? So, definitely, uh, the Devotion here is not nothing. And um, it's a card. It's kind of cool. In Limited, it's weird. Because if you have, if your opponent also has tokens, you're just going to, like, lose. Because you get to the little block it all day. But... It does turn on Great Henge. That is true. It does turn on Great Henge. Um, Skyclave Shade, really good here. Absolutely. Um, it is, there's just a lot of power here. It needs to be unlocked, but it, it is pretty good. It is pretty good. So Limited, Limited's a little sketchier. This might honestly be like a more of a cyborg card for Limited for um, for decks that don't can't block very well. But if your opponent's playing, making much tokens, this card's pretty terrible. Oh, they can't really attack into it either. So, I don't know. It's honestly probably fine, Limited. But it's a It's a card. It's a card. This is a card uh, for the ages. This is a chonker. This is a chonker. And up next, we have Demigoth Woe Eater. Apparently, the, the Strixhaven... The Strixhaven. The Witherbloom mechanic is really freaking big. Keyword big. Woe Eater. Four mana. A little easier to cast for a 7-6. Beginning of your upkeep, sack creature. So, pretty solid downside there. But, if you have to, if you have to, if to sacrifice this card... Opponent discards, you draw, you gain two. So there's at least a, a silver lining where if it gets to a point where you have to sacrifice this thing, um, you still get some value off it, which is pretty cool. Uh, seems like a good draft card. Again, you get a lot of tokens. Um, pretty reasonable. Yeah, aristocratic for sure. You know, but um, and if it dies, you, it's not that bad. So it's a very solid draft card. Probably worse for constructed, just not like big enough. Um... Solid card. Just a chonker. Solid draft card. Probably not for constructed, but... It does turn on Great Hand all by itself. Just a note. It does do that. So, that is a reasonable thing. Uh, with 7 power. So, solid card. Up next is Deadly Brew. Black, green, sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature or Planeswalker. If you sacrifice a permanent this way, you may return another permanent card and give it to your hand. This card is so much worse than it looks. Um... So many things need to go right here to make this card work. You need to have a permanent you want to get in the graveyard, okay? You need to have either nothing in play or a thing worth sacrificing to even get the card in your graveyard. And then your opponent's axe creature or planeswalker, they need to not they need to have a thing in play that they're they don't want to sacrifice, basically. So they have a noble hierarch in play, they'll sacrifice it, whatever. So innocent blood. Not the best card. It's good because it's, it's cheap. This is a hard to cast Innocent Blood with a lot of really, really awkward scenarios. This card's pretty bad. Um, unless the Edict's going to be really, really good. This is just not a good card. Uh, you know, so if you're playing tokens and they're not playing tokens kind of thing. But just not not a very good card. You know, the the Sacrifice has to hit. It has to hit or it's not good. This card is going to see very little play, if no play. Um, very, very specific scenario for this card to be reasonable. You get back what you just sacrificed. That's true. I guess we can make suppliers pretty cool. But even then, like, the Edict has to be good against your opponent, too. And it probably won't, so. Oh, another. You can't. Never mind, you can't. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I made the grave, grave mistake of reading chat. I'm never doing that one again. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, this card is just way too contextual, or, uh, contextual, yeah, not good, it sucks, it's bad. Dina Soul Seeper, black, green, 1-3. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. So it's not for each life gained, important to note, you can gain 10 life, but only lose one. Pay one, sack creature, it gets plus X, no end of turn, until X is sacrifice huge power. So, it's an okay draft card, um, obviously good with, uh, all of your, your tokens and stuff like that. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Nothing really crazy here. Um, 
Would have a really good cat oven for sure. Um, double triggering on the uh, on the life gain stuff, but it's all right. Definitely not constructed playable, but decent limited card. Decent limited card. It's fine. It's not veto. Veto actually counts for all the life you gain. So you gain three, you deal three, and so on and so forth. But but crumb. Thanks for resubbing. Appreciate that. Up next is Harness Infinity. It makes me really angry. This card doesn't cause black, 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 green, green, green. That one looks so out of place. It's so unesthetically pleasing. It drives me insane. Insane. Silly card here. Seven mana source, seven mana instant, sorry. Exchange your hand in your graveyard. So yeah. Commander card. I'm sure there's some stupid things you can do with this, with like the things that trigger when things go to the graveyard or whatever. Uh, it's not playable, instructed. It's maybe some stupid combo or something like that. But yeah, this is definitely a, a WTF card. Uh, just like one of those cards where you see it and you're like, that's cool. And then you just don't actually play it. But it's cute. It's cute. Uh, in limited, I mean, in limited, honestly, if you're uh, looking for like a late game, like draw five or whatever, it's not the worst. But you got to be like straight green, black, like, ugh. You know, art's cool, I guess. Sure. Up next is Infused Vitality. To matter for an instant. To end of turn, if a creature dies... I'm sorry. To end of turn, a creature gains Death Touch. And when it dies, turn to the battlefield, tap into the owner's control, gain two life. This is like your, again, a typical, like, eh, two mana instant trick. Uh, it's fine. It's okay. You can, you know, trade off, gain a few life. It's fine. Not a good limited trick. It's, it's an okay limited trick. I wouldn't want to play too many of these. It is cool with your... Um, never mind. Um, it's it's just okay. It's okay. Moldering Karak is next. Fox Moldering Karak. Do you up for a 3-3 Trample Lifelink? Solid card. Solid card that'll play very well with the uh, the Silver Quill cards that add counters. If you add, like, one counter to this card, it's a freaking house. Two counters, it's insane. But even as a 3-3 Lifelink for four, it's totally solid card. Uh, I think lifelink is one of the best the best mechanics for limited. It's super, super underrated. Super, super awesome. Mortality Spear is next. And uh, again, we have sort of like these the life gain payoffs that are just like pretty weird. Four mana, destroy target, non-land permanent. That's already fine, instant speed. Uh, we had Utter End that was mildly playable for a while. Um, you know, Veraski's Contempt, etc., etc. Uh, so that's fine. And then if you can gain life, it costs only two mana. At that point, it's insane. You know, at that point, we're in, like, Assassin's Trophy with no downside uh, territory, which is really, really good. So, the question is, can we consistently gain life? What deck wants to do that? What, cap what deck is capable of doing that, you know? Um, you know, like, maybe, maybe uh, obviously, Pests, you know, kind of do it. With the Wall, it's pretty good. Obviously, Oven, Familiar, and Historic can do it. And then the, the downside of just paying four isn't that bad either. So a lot of upside here. Pretty flexible card. Not a card you're going to play like a ton of. Because like, again, you are you can't like put a Revitalize in your deck and have this be your payoff, you know? Or, or you can't put a Kazandu Necropot in your deck. Um, Scavenging Ooze is okay. But now we're just like spending a mana on that anyway. So like, it's just, it's, it's good. It's not great. It's a solid card. It's not amazing. It's not in everything. Um, I don't foresee life gain being a tier one strategy in standard or even a tier two strategy. There aren't really the payoffs for it. Um, and then older formats, the, the life gain decks are usually white. So it's okay. This card is a bit overrated. You're going to be underwhelmed when you put four of a card in your deck and you cast it for four all the time. And you're like, man, this card's really inefficient, you know? So it's all right. It's all right. Uh, and limited, it's obviously first pick. Slam dunk first pick. But it's all right. It's all right. Solid card. Solid card. I get the feeling that most Magic players are overrating this card. Yeah, it is also contesting with Binding the Old Gods, which is a much better card than this. A much better card. So. Up next is Pestilent Cauldron. A flip card here. Artifact in the front. Black and two. Tap, tap to discard a card. Make a pest. Uh, okay, so that's like not great. To turn You can turn like a land into a pest or whatever, but pay one. Each opponent mills cards equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. Which is like also kind of eh. And then four, tap it. Exile four cards from a single graveyard. Draw a card. That part's okay. 
Um, the last part's not bad. So we have a little bit of card draw engine here. But realistically, this card's like pretty bad. Like, we can turn lands into pests. We can spend a million mana to draw a card. It's like kind of graveyard hate, but like, you know, for constructing this card, it's like pretty unexciting. Limited, all right, sure. It's, it's fine, you know, not super exciting. I'm not really punt puts card in my deck. The backside is Restorative Burst. Green, green, three, sorcery. Return up a two target creature, land, or planeswalker cards. Your graveyard right to your hand. Each player gains four. Exile, Restorative Burst. So, backside's not bad. Um, essentially, draw two spells and gain four life. You got to have the things in your bin to get with it, which is a concern. You know, like, Fabled Passage helps with that. Um, you know, some sort of self-mill or whatever. Gaining four life is cool to buffer you for casting it, but making them gain four life means you can't really play it in an aggro deck. It's just like an okay card. You know, it's not super exciting. These sort of four and five mana effects don't affect the board are pretty not great. Uh, so both sides of this card are pretty bad. Not really pumped with this one in either format. Not really exciting. Up next is Rush Rebirth. Black, green, instant. Choose a creature. When it dies this turn, search library for a creature card with lesser mana value, put it in the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. It's kind of like a really weird Neo form. Um, you need a sack outlet, and then you're sacking this to go get a thing with lesser mana value. So you're not going up or going down. It can target your opponent's stuff too. But that's true. I'm sorry, that's true. I, I missed that part. So you target their creature and you kill it and you go get a creature of your own. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, like, these cards are just, like, cute. There's a lot of hoops to jump through here where it's sort of like, all right, I gotta, like, play this on their creature and then bolt it, and then I get a creature that I kind of want, maybe. You know, it's just, like, it's all right. It's fine. Is it worth the trouble? Probably not. I mean, like, we're not really putting... We're not really assembling combos with this. We're not going up in mana with this. Um, if there's some stupid combo with it, sure, that's fine, I guess. But like, a lot of these Golgari cards so far, you're it's very easy to see the the magical Christmas land scenario of like, oh, I can do this, and if I do this, and then this happens, and this happens, it's gonna be insane. But like, they're just cute. They're not like they don't work a lot of the time. You know, magic cards aren't always in ideal scenarios. You want to hire card functions when things aren't working well. So for example, Bone Crusher Giant. How does Bone Crusher Giant function when your opponent's not playing two times two, two times creatures? It nugs them for two, and it's a four, three for three. That's a good fail state. That's a good magic card. You know, what's the fail state of this card? It doesn't do anything. Like anything. You know, so kind of cutesy. Um, don't think this card's very good. And then the things you want to sacrifice the most are your tokens, which get nothing which get nothing with this. So not super thrilled about this card. I think it's pretty weak. And then in limited, I think in limited it's fine. You just cast it and go get something, you know, it's whatever, I guess. But it's not super exciting either. It's just fine. It's just fine. It's a card. Ten the pests. Another green black instant. Additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Make X tokens where X is sacrifice creature's power. This card's like okay. I mean, like, same sort of thing where, like, yeah, they go to kill your creature. You sack it in response. You get four tokens. Look how smart you are. But the fail state of this card is kind of like nothing, right? What's our... What are we doing here? You know? We sacked the 11-10. Sure, that's awesome. But there aren't really any pacifisms in this set. No bubble snare. No pacifism. Um, eh. You know? It's just a card. It's not great. It's just another, like, cutesy card that's kind of hard to use with not much payoff. Up next is Valentin, Dean of the Vein. One black for a legendary Menace Lifelink 1-1. One, one. So, cool card to mutate onto. You know, C-Dash or Octopus. Best in show. Sorry, Octopus. I was wrong about you. <laughs> C-Dash or Octopus, best in show. So the best in show. I got to do a, a compilation video on all my terrible best in show calls. When you make, you know, a dozen calls every new set, you're bound to be wrong sometimes, you know? So... One, one, for two, one, one for one here. Uh, Manus Lifelink. If a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile it. 
That's not bad by itself. You know, so just a little bit of graveyard hate. When you do, you may pay two. If you do, make a pest. Okay. You know, it's like a sort of a graveyard hate card. A little bit of value. It's a woman of card. It's all right. Backside is Lizette, Dean of the Root. Four mana for a 4-4. Much better stats, obviously. Uh, whenever you gain life, you may pay one. If you do, put a counter on each creature you control, and they get trampled. So much better over here. Much better on the backside. We got uh, we got four. Um, we got four, 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 four. Yes, Sebastian, I chose Octopus over Shark Typhoon. I was wrong about a card in my set review before the set even came out. Who would have thought? Inconceivable. Come on now. So a four, 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 four is reasonable. Uh, in a limited, this card's a bomb. Just a, it just uh, it's a house. You know, it is weird. This card's not white, but I guess the green black, you know, theme is the is the, the life gain theme in this set. Um, food exists too. That's fair. That's fair. Um, card's solid. Again, life gain is a theme. It doesn't really work super well in, in constructed. There just aren't enough like payoffs for it and stuff. But kind of a, a weird card. Good limited card. Backside's really good. The front side's kind of just like. All right, I guess, you know, we can mutate onto it, I guess. But uh, more for the backside, and even then the backside's not great. Just all right. Just all right. Up next is Witherbloom Apprentice. Did I just miss Best in Show for this? Or is it just like later? Oh, it's... No, it's, it's later, okay. Witherbloom Apprentice. We have the the uh, Golgari entry into the, the Apprentice cycle. We have a 2-2 Magecraft. But if you cast an instant or sword spell, each player loses one, you gain one. So one of the better triggers here on the apprentice is um, draining for one for every spell you cast. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, solid two drop. Always a really good limited. Constructed probably not. You know, I guess uh, constructed wise, this this does tutor or does combo with the uh, chain of smog, the onslaught card that can copy itself. So you have this in play, cast chain of smog, and you just kill everyone. So like that's like a, a possible legacy playable, just two two mana cards in green black. So in in that combo respect, certainly playable. In in being played straight up, probably not. Probably not. But definitely a solid draft card for sure. Solid draft card. Up next, there we go. I I there it is. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I even question myself sometimes. Best in show is Wither Bloom Command. Now this is more of a card for older formats. Um Green Black Sorcery, again, it's a command, so you get to choose two. Target player mills three cards, then you return a land from your graveyard to your hand. So very similar to Mulch. You get to mill some cards, and then you get a land back. Uh, Mulch, or Seder Wayfinder. You can destroy a non-creature, non-land permanent mana value two or less. This kills a lot of stuff. Uh, the farther back you go, the better this card gets. Um, kills Tarmogoyf, Death Shadow, Monastery, so Spear. You know, kills... Uh, whatever artifact that costs two. I can't even think of it. Whatever. You know, whatever it is. You know, like, it's killed a lot of different things, um, which is pretty awesome. Which is pretty awesome. Then we have creature gets minus three, minus one to end a turn. So, not amazing, but can kill... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I can't kill Tarmogoyf. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That makes it worse. That makes it worse. Uh, it's not as good as I thought it was, um, but it still kills a variety of, uh, of artifacts and enchantments, things like that, older formats. Creature gets, creature, creature gets minus three, minus one, uh, so it can kill, like, Dark Confidant, Birds of Paradise, things like that. Uh, and then we have Drain for two. Um, I'm honestly a little sad. I didn't realize that the card did that. Uh, so it's, it's close to brutality for sure. Uh, it is a sorcery, which makes it worse, but even just, like, the self-mill part's pretty good. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's pretty solid. It's worse than I thought it was, uh, but that's okay. Um, would I change my best in show? Now that I know that I can read the words on the card? Uh, there aren't really any great cards in, in with the Blonde. I'm just gonna leave it. Minus three, minus one is very, very, very relevant. There are a lot of good one toughness creatures this thing kills. Um... A lot of good one top creatures things this thing kills. And having that be one of your modes is very, very good. So, card's fine. Self-mill part's pretty cool. Uh, it's fine. Whatever. I'm sure we should keep it. I'll just suck it up. It's fine. And then our last Witherbloom card is Witherbloom Pledge Mage. Five mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Magecraft, gain one life. 
Solid limited card. Just just your bread and butter limited five drop. If you need a five drop, it's big. A little bit of extra value. Super easy to cast. Um, just a solid draft card. Solid draft card. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what card I would choose for best in show. Aside from that. Maybe, maybe, maybe Blex, honestly. But that's okay. We'll just leave it. We'll just leave it. So... Um, that's it for, for, uh, for Wither Balloon. We got more, we got more colleges to do. You do folks like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, make fun of me for not knowing what that card did, because I'm sure you will. <laughs> I appreciate you all a lot. Of course I do. I'm kidding. Y'all great. I love y'all. All right. YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your best in show is for, uh, for Golgari.